Hello and welcome to Digital Marketing, what it is, how to determine the best fit for your business, and how to use it. Uh, we're going to give it just a few minutes to let our folks join on and get situated in the webinar before we get started. Hello and welcome. Looks like we're having some folks join us. Live, thank you for being on today and participating in the webinar. All right, we may have a few more folks join us, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Desiree Johnson, and I am the training coordinator for the Small Business Development Center. And we are excited today to bring this digital marketing content to you. Um, and we're able to provide it at no cost today, thanks to the CARES Act. Um, so I am very excited to share with you our guest speakers, and I'm going to introduce them here in just a second. Aren't they lovely, Chris and Andy? Um, but first, I want to just go over a few uh, minor Zoom tips to help you have a productive webinar experience today. Um, it is conducted over Zoom's webinar function, so your video is turned off as you enter the session and your audio is automatically muted. Additionally, I recommend you use speaker view. You can find that in the upper right hand corner. This will allow you to see our speakers and provide the best experience. I also recommend if you're using a laptop or a phone, make sure you're plugged into a power source. Please utilize the Q&A box on the bottom center of your screen to ask any questions that you have. I will be assisting Chris and Andy in monitoring um, the chat box and the Q&A so we can move through the presentation. Um, also, the session will be recorded so you can view it later on demand or share it with a friend or fellow small business owner. And a digital copy of the presentation will be provided to you with the link in the comments section and I will post that here in just a few minutes as we get started. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Chris and Andy from Media Advantage. Media Advantage is a full service advertising agency headquartered in San Angelo, Texas. They have been in business almost 20 years. Media Advantage is trusted by name brand clients nationwide. The staff has expertise in different areas of marketing with a, with a mission to develop dynamic visionary marketing strategies by being curious and exploring new and traditional avenues. So thank you, Chris and Andy for joining us today and I will turn it over to you. Hi, it's Chris. Um, so we're going to talk today about our digital marketing. There's lots of different things to go through. So bear with us. Um, you know, it's the age of digital marketing in the world with so much new uh, terminology and options and sales reps. It's going to be really hard to determine if you're making the right choice and spending the right amount of money. Um, you know, we'll try to cover all of these questions like what is digital? What's does the terminology mean? How do I choose digital service um, providers? Awesome. So I'm Andy and I will get us kicked off with defining what is digital. Now there are lots of variations of this same de definition and essentially digital advertising is promoting your product or service to people on the internet. And really just to drive home that point it's a huge part of marketing right now and you know this is the third part of our uh, series where you know we first kind of talked about the basics of marketing and then we talked about traditional marketing and digital marketing really just has kind of a, a world of its own in 2018 facebook made 55 billion dollars in advertising so that means that marketers paid them $55 billion to advertise their product on Facebook platforms to Facebook users. So like we said, digital advertising is kind of a big deal. You know, it can also be referred to as online advertising or paid media. And all of these terms just mean that you're promoting that product online with the hope of, you know, starting a, a conversion, which speaking of conversions, we're going to really just kind of kick things off and we're going to go through some definitions. I know this really isn't the fun part of it, but 
in order for you to really understand the lingo and to make educated buying decisions as a small business owner, you have to know this terminology. This applies to how you pay for the digital and how it's measured. So the first thing is an impression. And an impression is when an advertisement or any other form of digital media renders on a user screen. So impressions are not action-based, they're merely defined by a user potentially seeing the advertisement, making CPM campaigns ideal for businesses intent on spreading brand awareness. So we'll talk about a CPM, but so essentially an impression is a view, right? So an impression is somebody has scrolled past that ad. Now a CPM is a cost per thousand or a cost per mil. And this is a marketing term that's used to denote the price of 1,000 advertisement impressions on the web page. So you'll get into, you know, once we start diving into some of these uh, tactics, YouTube, it is a cost of $30 per CPM. So $30 per thousand view. So that is how, you know, some digital products are priced out. Now CTR is a click-through rate. So essentially that is the number of clicks that your ad received divided by the number of times your ad is shown. So clicks divided by impressions. So for example, out of 100 impressions, if I've got five clicks, my click through rate is 5%. Now that'll be important whenever we look at analytics because ultimately we want our the people that we're targeting with these digital ads to click our ad, right? We want them to have that call to action, whether it's to go to your website or to call your store. Now, there's also some other ways to price out digital depending on the product. There's a cost per view, which is nice, especially in the video world where you can skip ads. So if your ad is skipped, essentially, you're not gonna pay for it. So you really maybe want to get that marketing message in the first five seconds before they skip it because that's free advertisement for you, right? So that's a cool way to buy digital. Um, there's cost per post engagement, which is applicable to the social media world. So really, I only pay if somebody likes my post or comments on it. There's a cost per link click and a pay per click advertising. And those are kind of self-explanatory and will make a little bit more sense whenever we hit those tactics. There's bidding. So in the world of paid search marketing, a bid is the maximum amount of money an advertiser is willing to pay for each click on an advertisement. So if you're paying per click and, it, and there's a bidding system going on, so let's say there's two plumbers in town and they're both running a, a pay per click campaign, well, those are gonna be bidding against each other. And so you don't want it to go over a certain amount or else you're gonna bow out. So that's kind of what that maximum amount of money means. Um, conversions. So a conversion is essentially, uh, well, we've got two definitions of conversion because um, so it could essentially be tracking your device back into a zone, which is near your business, or it could be that prospect signing up for an email list or buying your product. Essentially, a conversion is somebody who has taken that call to action, which is the immediate response you want the user to take, right? So what's, what's their call to action? Do you want them to click on your ad? Do you want them to give you a call? Are you just doing brand awareness and you just want to have them see your ad? Um, and then the last two terms uh, that we have here on the slide is display, which essentially when we say display, we're referring to a static ad, which we have some example of display ads in the next slide. And then pre-roll is essentially a video ad that plays before the content. So those are just some quick reference uh, digital terms. We are gonna learn a few more as the slides progress, um, but really wanted to give us that foundation um, before we kind of dive into some of this uh, digital information. Yeah, so here are some examples of some display ads, like Andy said. Um, really talk about our creative here for a second. You know, to create an online advertising strategy that works, you have to create the right ad for your audience. So it needs to be something that makes them stop scrolling and think, wow, that's what I need. Um, you know, the ad is going to make your prospects 
you know, convert over to your website or, you know, whatever message that you're trying to send to them. So these examples are kind of like traditional advertising. If you're thinking about a display ad, you know, that's like text or images that grab your attention. You know, they, they've been used in newspaper ads or things like that. So it just, that's, this is what you're looking at. This is what you see. If you've seen it in a print ad, this is just now a digital version of it. Um, so, you know, they're called banner displays. Um, and a lot of times they're, you know, you'll, you'll see them on your website or depending on where you're targeting them. So they could be actually really small. They could be kind of big. There's lots of different, you know, sizes, sizes that we'll get into. Um, and so let's see, one thing to think about on, on your creative is it's clickbait. You know, you want that to really capture your audience and look at it and it's gotta be something that's gonna draw their eye. Um, it's gotta have some information in there and then it, you know, they need to know what's going to happen when they click it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so here, when, when you're doing creative, you know, it can come in lots of different ways. You could have, you know, a graphic, a video, a GIF, things that move. Um, here is an example of some ad sizes that just one of our media partners would ask for, for one campaign on one platform. Um, so, Sizes vary depending on where they're used digitally. Newsletters, computers, phones, iPads, laptops, websites, all these different ways to receive your ad needs all of these different sizes. Um, so if you're running a campaign, you want to make sure that you have all of the sizes that you need so that they can be served to consumers on all platforms. Um, if you don't have one or you skip an ad, ad size for some reason, you can miss out on that impression, which turns into a lead, which turns into a sale. So it's really important that you know what you need and you get all of it. Um, so also one of the great things about digital is that you can use audience filtering. Um, you know, you all of these different things listed here are things that you can filter your audience um, for targeting. So, for example, we ran a campaign for a client for hiring. They needed a, a bilingual audience in Florida and Texas. And so our creative really reflected that. Um, there were, there was, you know, a campaign also that we ran, same, same idea. We need we needed hiring, the, the audience was college age students. So, you know, we were really sure not to feature a person that was, you know, older that didn't go to college. You know, we kind of targeted <laughs> our younger audience, you know, in that kind of form. It was bright, it was colorful, it was bold lettering, that kind of thing. So it's really important to make your creative reflect your audience and, and they'll be able to click on that ad because they like it. Okay. Perfect. So, you know, looking at all those filters and, and I'll tell you, we have pages and pages of filters, you guys, but how do they know all this information about me? So your phone, your computer, the internet in general contain a gargad gargantuan <laughs> amount of information on you and, and Google, for instance, knows essentially every website you have ever gone to in your entire life. And now thanks to geolocation, we can tell you where you live, where you work, where you travel to, you know, and what you're doing that day. So when you visit a site that has to show you an ad later on, essentially they're tagging your browser with a small text file called a cookie. So when you move on to the new site that has a space for a personalized ad, even though it's not related to the original site, the page will recognize this cookie and show you an ad that could be applicable, right? So it's that vacuum cleaner that chases you all over the internet. You know, it is worth knowing that, you know, this tracking is becoming even more sophisticated. It's possible for them to follow users as they move across the internet, as you move across different devices. Now, if you were searching for, let's say, you know, for some shoes at work, you might see the same pair of shoes when you go home and get on your computer there. 
So this is called a triangulation, which essentially, you know, that company is putting cookies into your browser, your IP address, and whenever you go home and you connect to Wi-Fi, then it's telling all these other devices that you're the same person. So they're looking for those users with very similar patterns and um, can conclude that these ads are relevant to you. Now, what is data mining? You know, this is a term that we hear a lot. And essentially data mining is a process used by companies to turn raw data into useful information, right? So those companies are using software, looking for patterns, and then they're selling your data. You know, some third party data providers, essentially cable companies, they know a lot about your viewing habits. They are connected to your internet, so they know about your search habits. Um, loyalty cards. This was a really cool example. When you use a loyalty card at a grocery store, that's tied to your information, right? So that loyalty card tracks the type of purchases you make. Um, you know, public info is essentially a data provider. So how you vote, what type of vehicle you drive. Um, we have a client, a Ford client, and we can send ads to people that are Ford drivers and, you know, if they need a new Ford. So it's really, we love digital because we are for sure reaching our target audience. We're spending our customers money appropriately. And um, we know that, you know, the ad is not getting lost in maybe somebody that isn't um, a candidate for our product or service. Now, one thing um, <laughs> that we get a lot and, and that we see a lot, you know, of chatter online is, of course, you'll talk about something and then you start getting ads. So are they listening? Well, yes, your phone is listening to you, right? So everything you say may be recorded through your device, your device's microphones. You know, any listening device that you have, um, Alexa, smart TVs, anything with a microphone, they're listening for phrases. Essentially, um, you know, we, with this, the campaign that Chris mentioned before about recruitment, we did some listening device activation for people that were talking about needing a job. And so there's always some, you know, different ways to reach digital audiences. They are listening. If this is something personally that you don't prefer, then you can always turn off those microphones and you won't be served ads specific to the things you're talking about. Um, so let's kind of get started with some more of like the well-known digital tactics. Um, and, and here's email. As much as email is an older channel of the internet age, it's still really trendy and email marketing, the ROI is really, really hot. Um, so first things first, you want to get qualified subscribers. Um, you want to engage your public. You want to keep your eyes on the email base, find some automation tools that will help with the process. Um, of course, developing your own list is the best way to go, but there's also email lists that you can get started, you can purchase. Um, there's, these lists are people that want your information. You know, they can opt in or out. Uh, so it's, you're not just hitting them blind. Um, so what you're looking at here, this particular list is an insurance agent state by state list. This kind of shows you how many insurance agents are in each state right now. So you can touch a lot of people, even if you picked out you know, whatever your target state might be. Um, so, so once you find your, your qualified subscribers, you wanna nurture them with content that they want, um, things that they wanna read about and click on and, and care about. But you wanna be careful and you don't wanna send them lots of different emails. Um, think about segmenting your list on the characteristics of your audience. Um, what, what are their personal interests? So you could put together a calendar with, you know, messages that you're going to send. Um, you know, don't spam your list. You, you, these, are, these are people who want information from you, so, so you want to keep them engaged and, and, and not send them things that they don't really want. Um, you know, be precise. Count on an automation tool. So something like, for example, MailChimp. Um, you know, we use this a lot in some of our email campaigns, depending on what it's for. Um, you can send a newsletter, you can track 
even when they open the newsletter, your consumers. You can see uh, if they've clicked from the newsletter to your website. Um, all these things are important to kind of monitor and, and keep your eye on. Um, there's even programs that send flyers for special events to parents um, through schools. Of course, all of that is approved content um, by, by the school, but that's something that you can do as well. Um, you can pair some of this digital information or you know, email information with digital campaigns that you're running um, and then follow up with an ad or, or something else on social media. So keeping in line with some of the more uh, well-known digital tactics, OTT or essentially connected TV. Um, this is another term we're gonna learn. So OTT means over the top. Um, a lot of the digital providers will refer to it as OTT. Um, and essentially it's the term for TV that's connected through the internet and that's how the programming comes through. So they, a user would essentially use, or they would essentially access OTT through a device, right? So they would have Apple TV, they would have a Fire Stick, they might have a smart TV, um, they might have a Roku, and then essentially they watch programming through these different apps. So Hulu, um, Pluto, you know, there's all different types of apps that you can watch television programming from, as well as specific apps for networks like HBO. Um, you know, you don't see advertisements on Netflix or um, Amazon Prime. So those aren't specific examples of OTT, but the specific apps like the Hulus and the Plutos. Now these are non-skippable ads. And OTT is priced based on impressions. So remember our term earlier. So that's the cost per thousand impression, right? Um, you know, depending on the provider and depending on, um, you know, whether it's a targeted OTT campaign where, you know, we're definitely always going to apply our filters, you know, if we want a certain age group or if we want to just stay on the premium OTT provider. So essentially Hulu is the top premium OTT provider. Um, your pricing can range from $55 to $75 CPM. So essentially you would want to invest in a campaign that's at least 10,000 CPMs, if not more than that. And, and your digital providers and consultants will make recommendations based on your budget. Um, and so again, OTT is, is more of a traditional um, type of digital advertisement. Okay, YouTube. So YouTube, number one social media site. It's still kind of classified as social media. Um, a lot of people watch content on YouTube. YouTube can be watched through our smart TVs and through our devices from our previous slide. Of course, we can watch T, uh, YouTube on our phones, on our computers, and you know, there's a couple of different ways to run your ads on YouTube. Now, the, the TrueView format has some different options and essentially a pre-roll, which is when our video is gonna run before the content, will be a cost per view pricing model, um, which can get pretty expensive. However, again, we are only paying for our, um, whenever our ad is viewed. And so those first five seconds are really, really pertinent if you're running a cost per view campaign. You can also run a bumper ad campaign, which is essentially that quick five to second, five to six second ad because um, essentially at six seconds is when they put the skip button on. Um, you can purchase it with in-stream ads um, or in-search ads or in-display ads. So there's different ways that your commercial can run through a YouTube campaign. Now, you do receive analytics when it comes to all of these tactics, and we're going to talk about those um, towards the end of the presentation. So you'll know when your ads were served, if somebody clicked on them and if they how long they watched them okay so we're gonna start we're gonna talk about some targeted advertising now this is primarily used with a display type campaign 
which is again a, a static ad. Um, sometimes you can run video in these, but we're going to really just focus on um, this from a display side. So we can target our audience based on behavior, based on context, and then we can add some advanced filtering in it. So behavior, of course, is essentially what, what's, what is that person doing on the internet? What are they Googling? Um, you know, are they searching, let's use the home improvement uh, topic. So are they searching for, you know, different types of home improvement items, different paints, and, and I own a paint store, so I might want to send my ads to them if they're Googling paint, right? Same with contextual. If they're reading articles on do it yourself or renovations and I own a paint store, then again, I want my ads to show up to those types of people. Um, and then of course, advanced targeting lets you utilize a blend of the different filters. So that huge filter list that Chris showed you, we could apply an age bracket. We could uh, also make sure that they own their home. Maybe they have a household income over 100,000 because we are um, a renovation company. You know, if somebody's going to remodel their home, obviously they're going to own it, right? They're not going to be a renter. They're not going to live in an apartment complex. And so um, that really lets you utilize um, the filters and, and reach your, your audience that would specifically use your product. Now, on targeted advertising, we can also go through our mobile devices. And one of our most popular tactics is essentially gonna be geofencing campaigns. We highly recommend geofencing geographical campaigns. Now, this of course is only served to people that have their phones on and have their location on, right? Um, but the cool thing about these types of campaigns is that you can reach people up to a year in the past. So during, you know, our COVID times now, the geofence campaigns, we essentially set six months back to reach that audience. Okay, who was going to the university whenever everything was open? Who was going to the bookstore? And so we can still reach that audience even though everybody was staying at home. That's so cool. Yeah, it was such a neat thing. It it saved people, you know, on advertising. They could cut their budgets and really just only focus on these geofence campaigns. And we knew the people in that bookstore love books, <laughs> so we could advertise our bookstore client. Now. Um, of course, geofence is a virtual perimeter that you draw around any location and you can put up to 100 feet to two miles. And then geographical is a little bit more broad where maybe it's just a zip code or a city or a region. Um, you can do addressable um, targeted advertising essentially with that, um, you know, upload addresses. So if you ran a direct mail campaign and you want to pair that up with some geofencing, then we can upload those addresses and send a digital ad to those people that received your piece of direct mail. Um, or even, you know, with that email campaign that Chris showed you, a lot of times we can get addresses with the purchased email list. And so maybe we do want to upload those addresses and send them an ad through a digital device. Um, and then another one that we love, 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 and especially here in um, San Angelo um, around rodeo time is our event targeting. Now, what's fun about that is we can create a target fence around any event and set that for a time frame. They collect the device IDs and attendees and then they retarget those attendees during and up to 30 days after the event. So if it was a, you know, Texas country music concert and I sell boots, you know, maybe I want to target these concerts and um, send these attendees my ads for boots and hopefully they'll come in and buy a new pair before they go to the next concert. Um, so it's a really great way to, to reach certain types of people that are interested in things that could overlap your business or product. Uh, now, the last feature on this targeted advertising specifically for this addressable geofence is that, you know, not only, you know, the most well known is, is the click to the website, but here we can click to call and we can click to show directions. And so it's a little bit more um, 
you know, accessible to where I'm going to click to call, I'm going to click that ad and I've got my phone and I'm calling. So the call to action is um, a little bit easier from a mobile device. Now, a lot of times, um, you know, your campaigns, whether you choose targeted advertising, whether you choose YouTube or some of the other campaigns we talk about here in a little bit, you get retargeting um, as, a, as a bonus. And, and, you know, what I mean by uh, as a bonus is essentially if somebody has clicked on your ad and gone to your website, then a lot of digital providers will add that retargeting ad as kind of a value add. So they've already clicked on your website, two days later they're on a different website and then there's your ad. Um, you can also purchase retargeting for search and keywords. So essentially um, a user who is searching specific keywords, um, we've got a new car in this example. So maybe you're targeted with an ad on a different website with this new car. You know, and one thing that's really cool about um, some creative options for new cars is that it can be a dynamic ad, which means if you've looked at a specific new car or a specific shirt on a website, remember how when you're looking at something else, it's that same car, that same shirt, that would be a dynamic creative because then we can replace what they've clicked on into that ad. And so again, you're reminded, hey, you didn't make this purchase or hey, remember when you looked at this car. So, and then of course the website is the visitors to your site, uh, retargeting them um, on different sites. Okay, so Google is, um, you know, a very important part of a marketing digital tactic. Um, we talked about some different things that you should do from a traditional media standpoint like claiming your business listing, making sure all your Google information is correct. And now we're gonna take just a brief look at SEO and SEM. You know, there's so much information about these two words out there and, um, you know, really encourage you guys to, to meet with some digital provider reps and, and learn a lot more than of course what we can teach you on two minutes in this one slide, right? So. The phrase is SEO, which means search engine optimization, and SEM, which means search engine marketing, are very similar. And sometimes they're used interchangeably. You know, SEO and SEM are different. SEM is a broader term than SEO, you know, where SEO aims to provide better organic search results. SEM uses the search engines to advertise your website or business to the internet. You know, customers will see a more targeted traffic to your website. So there's kind of an example there in the screen um, on the right corner. So when people use a search engine, you know, to query, you know, shoes, the organic search is going to show them from an SEO standpoint, the top shoe stores but then the paid advertising or the sponsored links are the ones at the top and they're prominently displayed above or beside the organic search results as a product of SEM. Now these are not competing services. SEO is considered a subset of SEM. Now in smaller markets, SEM isn't as applicable as it is in a much larger market. Um, so, SEO is a slow and gradual process, right? We, you know, recommend, first of all, like I mentioned, you want to just make sure your Google business listing has all of your pertinent information. Um, it has your hours. You verified your location on Google. You have uh, made sure that your contact information is there. You're answering those reviews you are um, putting in images. You know, when you Google something, there's images to the right. So once you've taken that first step, then your second step is to kind of take a look at your website, right? Now, your webmaster will be able to provide some guidance, and then you can also purchase SEO services that help you increase your SEO standing. So you wanna make sure that, um, your keyword phrases are created on the back end of your website. It's a very integral part of an SEO campaign, you know, and that keeps in mind your business offered services, your target audience, your 
demography, your geography, your uh, trends. And so instead of keywords, Google now looks at key phrases. Now you want to make sure the content on your website and the wording talks about all the services that you have and it's not necessarily listed on an image because Google's reading your website. Google cannot read an image. So if you have wording on an image, then Google's not going to see that and pull that up. Um, you can also do some what's called website indexing on the back end. And um, you can set up a blog to where you're posting information and you're posting just relevant content about your business once a week, once a month. And again, Google loves seeing all that all those words and all those information and they will serve up organically your website to people that are searching for that specific type of information. You know, we strongly suggest if you guys are Googling yourself and, and you're not finding yourself that um, you get with your webmaster or essentially hire a professional to kind of help you out. Now there's lots of uh, YouTube um, videos that can help you with SEO and SEM. SEM, you can purchase yourself direct from Google. Um, you just kind of want to go through a little bit of that training process to make sure that you're um, applying your, your funds properly on the back end of Google, because it can definitely be a bit overwhelming and confusing. Okay. $55 billion slide right <laughs> I know everybody loves advertising on social media and, and we're really today we're gonna just talk more about Facebook and Instagram we do advertise a little bit on snapchat and we're actually an approved advertiser on TikTok. but um, you know right now advertising is new on both of those platforms and especially with TikTok going through some transitions um, really just recommend that your advertising would probably be spent more effectively on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so Facebook and Instagram advertising, you know, I'm sure most of you know that these platforms are owned by the same organization. And so you can purchase social media advertising direct from Facebook, or you can go through a third party digital provider. Um, and, you know, again, we've got some targets and some filters through social media advertising. Now they're not, they're not as extensive as what we showed you on that first slide, but there are some filters you can apply. Now, Facebook and Instagram advertising is not to be confused with boosting, right? So this advertising is essentially going to be shown in somebody's feed as a sponsored ad. Everybody's seen them. You know, we recommend, highly recommend um, that people use a video advertisement. And Chris is going to talk a little bit about that stuff in the next slide. But let's look at the campaign types. Um, so we can choose to purchase our social media advertising in different ways. So if we just want to run a branding campaign that there's not necessarily a call to action, we really just want them to see our logo and just remember it. Maybe it's um, a plumbing service or something that is not always an immediate need. Then we want to run an awareness because that CPM is going to be the most affordable option out of these four options, right? Now, the second one is the cost per click. So if we're asking them, click here to learn more or click here to apply then maybe we want to pay cost per click. Now that can be a bit pricier. However, we are paying for those clicks. We're paying for people that are taking that next step. And so um, that's really a, a great way to invest your money for a conversion, right? And so is a cost per engagement. So if somebody has liked our post or has commented on it, um, then that's when, um, when we're, you know, when there's a financial responsibility due is if somebody has commented on it. Now the cost per click and the cost per engagement also work really well with brand awareness because people are still seeing your ad, even though they're not clicking on it or talking about it. Um, and then you can also retarget on social media. So with that email campaign, you can 
because you have their email now if their email is associated with their Facebook address then they could potentially start seeing ads on Facebook so um, different ways to really kind of interweave these tactics and help them work together well and you don't even have to have your own Facebook page to advertise on Facebook right you do okay actually so yes that you yeah you do that. you didn't before but yeah you do okay. and um, you have to have a personal page and then essentially you have to have the business page it's associated with. So um, it does get a little bit tricky. And, and if you don't want a page, then, um, you know, maybe hire an agency and, and yeah, we can kind of help that. work around it. Mm -hmm. sure. um, so looking back at, you know, some of your social advertising creative options, specifically here are some examples on Facebook. Um, you know, you can have your single image you can even overlay some text on that image you know they're going to flag you if you put too much text on it they they really want that to be clean and, and you know like andy said earlier google wants to read those words it just can't always be on an image and you know same with facebook and your advertising on there you can have some graphics but primarily it's, it's going to be your image it, it takes up most of that space um, you can do a video of course facebook it seems like it's really going so much video these days. Um, people love it. It's, it's the number one thing out there, video right now. Um, let's say you do a carousel down there in the right in the right corner. You can read the example shows, you know, almost a panoramic um, view of a photo, which is really cool. Nice to have. I've seen that several times on Facebook. You know, of course, they can be different images as well. If you're you know, featuring um, a furniture store maybe and you're, and you're wanting to show different types of chairs or couches or something like that, that would, that's when you would use that. Um, same with a slideshow um, on Facebook. So those are, those are some different ideas there on how you can display your ads. Okay, digital music. So we have done some advertising on some of these digital music platforms and, and wanted to um, talk about it a little bit because everybody's always curious and and we do hear um, especially whenever we're you know obviously creating a marketing mix of traditional media and digital media you know the radio versus the pandora and um what you know the the data we have is that people listen to both right and advertising on some of these digital music platforms can be cost prohibitive to some small businesses. I will say currently Pandora has a minimum requirement of a $5,000 advertising campaign for two months. So it's not always the best fit for all small businesses, but sometimes, um, you know, it could be um, for us as an agency, a lot of times what we can do is we can put three advertisers on one campaign and they split the cost. Um, so that's always an option that we do for things like, um, you know, digital music and, and Super Bowl and Olympics and things like that. But digital music definitely has some, some filtering, uh, location, the kind of the genre and the type of music they listen to. Um, and then here we go. So I got this straight off of Pandora. You see that down at the bottom? Enhance your targeting by utilizing our integration with over 10 leading third party data providers, right? So it's what we talked about earlier. So Pandora also has your shopping behaviors. They know, you know, what types of entertainment you like. And so again, we can really target our audience um, for their specific habits like this specific campaign. So this was a national campaign that we did for that insurance agent example that we've been using. Um, and essentially, we were able to see where we should focus our dollars on Pandora, what geographic location, right? So we put all our money in California and Texas, right? Because they had the highest rate of um, insurance professionals. So, um, really fun statistics here and a lot of your digital providers are going to have this stuff for you right and we're going to talk a little bit more about that whenever we um, get to the slide that really talks about um, how you find your digital provider so <clears throat> we are kind of getting close to the end here and um, you know we really just scratched the surface of digital tactics and we really just went very broad and generic 
on them. You know, we've got three different digital vendors that we use. There's 20 out there here locally that we know of. And so out of the three vendors we use, we have a total of, I think, over 160 different digital tactics. A lot of them are very similar with just different tweaks. Um, and so, you know, here's some honorable mentions that I definitely wanted to bring up. Um, native display advertisement is essentially, remember our word display, which is a, a static ad, but it looks like it's part of the website. So I'm, you know, browsing a real estate website and I see an ad for a real estate agent, but it, it's exactly like what the website, all the coloring, the background. And so I think it's part of that site. And so I thought that was a, a cool way to advertise. Um, one of our digital partners has something called Ad Messenger. And essentially that's like a little scrolling message at the bottom of your mobile device that gets sent depending on um, if you reach that target audience. And, and that's a really cool attention grabbing digital tactic. Um, you can advertise on specific apps like Waze. Um, if I'm a gas station or if I'm related to some kind of travel, um, then maybe I want to throw some ads up on Waze whenever, you know, somebody's using it for directions. Um, LinkedIn is great for a hiring campaign or a, a very professional organization. Um, Pinterest is a fun one. Um, Pinterest is really great for you small business owners that have products, okay? Pinterest advertising essentially looks like a pin and once somebody pins it to their board or shares it or does something with it, then it becomes organic into the Pinterest universe. And so that is a really fun um, tactic that we like to use. And then CRM. So our CRM tool is essentially a sales tool that organizations use to track their customer data. And so you've got all your customer data in there, like when you've talked to them, their phone number, their email. And so you can essentially retarget your CRM database with ads after you've potentially sent them an email about a new campaign you've had. So um, just thought, again, these were some honorable mentions and just want to really highly stress that we did not really scrape the surface on the digital world, just wanted to provide some um, great information there. These are all things that we've done for our clients here locally, right? I mean, most most all of these texts we've used and, and had some analytics on and been able to see how they work for each person um, during the campaign. And I mean, they're affordable. I mean, you can actually do these things. <laughs> it's, it's, it's within reach. Uh, Gosh, when you get in into the big books, you can advertise on mm. Alexa and do oh. voice recognition. Yes. I mean, we really didn't even get to talk about any of that. It just <laughs> goes on and on. So. Yeah, and you know, this is the one, I wouldn't say the one, but this is the part of our industry that's always evolving and changing and that we really do have to keep up with current trends. We have to keep up with current laws. Um, and, you know, eventually I'm sure that there will be some, some different regulations that might occur um, when it comes to digital advertising, um, you know, this is kind of a new world for marketing, right? And so with every digital campaign comes digital analytics, you know, and essentially the, this is referred to as insights, dashboards, analytics, and really this is just the information that shows your campaign results, right? So here I'm on the, the top, I'm showing those are the impressions I purchased, right? That's how many clicks that that campaign received and that's my click through rate. Now there are industry benchmarks. So your digital provider, you know, I don't know is, is 36% is that a good click through rate? I have no idea. Well, actually it really is because the industry benchmark for this particular campaign is at 0.17. So, you know, those are definitely different things you can ask. You can Google them, um, you know, down at the bottom of this particular example is the OTT campaign, right? Now, if I'm watching connected TV, I'm not clicking on an ad, it's on my TV, right? So that's not gonna have a click-through rate analytic. And if it does, it's gonna be super low, but the completion rate is really important, right? Um, because these ads are non-skippable, the completion rate is usually up in the high 90s. 
Um, the reason why it would be low is essentially if they just decided to watch a different program after they had already started watching. And then um, here is uh, just some examples of uh, some digital analytics. I'll let Chris kind of yeah, go over. I mean, you can kind of see just, just reading through. We picked out some addresses, uh, it's very specific and targeted those people in those buildings. Um, and so they were able to walk in. We got the impression that they were there. Some of those people clicked on it and then there's our CTR. So this is, these are the things that, that they, they, they get the ad when they're in the building. Maybe they didn't open up their phone while they were there, but we captured them. And then when they left later on, they opened up their phone and we got them that way. Um, so it could happen that same day. It's, the creative stuff. Yeah, well, and I love the, the creative part of that because that on this particular campaign, we used different images. And so we weren't really sure what was going to work the best. And, um, and so even though we see the bottom one get the app had the most clicks, that's because, you know, we served a lot more impressions on that one. And so we can really see that same day delivery for this particular uh, customer uh, was our highest click through rate. And so um, in the next campaign, we will recommend that they use that ad creative um, a little bit more than the other. So, um, you and know, you can change these up. That's the key yeah. thing here is that, you know, you see that something's not working, we'll change it immediately. Um, that's something you can do with digital. It's great. Well, and marketing's never guaranteed. So, um, you know, the, the great thing about digital is that we can at least guarantee that our target audience is going to see it and, um, you know, hope that our, our advertising dollars are effective. And, you know, this is, um, this is the hard part, right? So how do I choose a digital service provider? I know most of you as small business owners have taken meetings with different media reps, um, your radio rep, your TV rep, they all sell digital, your newspaper rep, your uh, phone, phone book, book mm -hmm. rep, yep. they all sell digital. And so, you know, we do recommend that you take those meetings, you know, carve out some time and meet with them, ask questions. Um, your reps will make recommendations for you based on your business. Again, these are national brands, national companies that these reps represent. And so they have essentially worked with your type of business and might have a case study. You know, now that you've gone through, you know, this seminar, you know some of the terminology and, and how the way things are priced. And so whenever this rep is going through this information, you can ask questions or you can understand. And, and we always recommend to meet with at least two. Um, so that you can compare. Now, not all digital providers have the same digital products and or are they called the same thing? So keep that in mind. You know, we could call something targeted display and it could be um, called run of network somewhere else. So, um, you know, just really want to kind of understand what they're, they're selling you and what you're buying, right? Uh, Some may have uh, longer not leases, but the contract contract mm -hmm. agreements, you know, for digital, I mean, really recommend try something for three months. Uh, it's, it's so hard to just, let me try it for a week that you'll never be able to do that. You, I mean, even a month, you might find someone who'll do that for you, but you know, three, three months that will give you a really, really good exposure and idea if this is a tactic you want to use. And, and within some of that, those providers are going to let you pivot a little bit too. Um, but also you've got some providers that well, they want 12 a months. minimum 12 months. Yeah. And so, you know, be ready for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm so glad Chris brought that up. You know, as we very rarely commit our clients to a 12 month digital campaign, um, unless we have seen proven results and we know that that's going to work for them. Um, we want to be able to pivot after three to six months, you know, definitely have to, to go more than a month, but 12 months to us is, seems extreme for a commitment um, from a digital standpoint. Um, oh, asked to see the example report of the analytics. You know, that could also sway your opinion on which digital provider you choose. If you like them both, maybe the reporting is the deciding factor. I know for us it was, okay. uh, for a couple of them, was, you know, how well do I work with a rep? How well um, does the reporting look? Am I always having to ask for it? So um, that could be a way um, for you to choose a digital provider. And then lastly, some of these things you can purchase direct. 
You know, I mentioned um, you can go, if you have a Facebook account for your business, you can purchase Facebook advertising direct. You can um, purchase SEM direct. Um, you know, one of the things I will say, going back to using a digital service provider as an advantage is that they do monitor these campaigns for you. And if something isn't looking right, they're gonna let you know and you can make a, an adjustment. They also usually bonus you the creative. So all those ad sizes we were showing you, um, if you do the buying direct, then you have to figure out how to get that designed. Um, if you go through the digital provider, then a lot of times they'll um, walk you through that process and they'll have a, a minimal fee or they'll um, bonus that out for your business. So, um, that is the end of our, our digital recap. Um, we have a couple of minutes if we have any questions. Desiree, we'll kick it back over to you. Perfect, thank you ladies so much. That was a great presentation. I know digital uh, marketing sometimes can be a lot to digest. So if you have any questions, please feel free to jack, drop them, excuse me, in the Q&A bar or in the chat panel. I'm monitoring both. So, I uh, just want to say thank you to Chris and Andy for such a great presentation. Um, let's give it just a few minutes and see if we have any questions come in. Um, and I will kind of get started uh, with a question that I have developed uh, might be the uh, Andy may be willing to kick me under the table, but you know, it's so yeah, hard. To yeah. <laughs> It's so much to digest, uh, you know, any class that you take, any online webinar. So if as a small business owner, we're super busy, we're trying to get everything done, manage our business and work in our business a lot of times. And so if you have one action item today, what would be your, you know, if you can only do one thing right now, what would that be from today's presentation? Okay, so, you know, when you're getting into this digital marketing and media, you know, this is, this is a little bit advanced. So you've got to have, you know, your ducks in a row, your foundation, your website is done. Where are all these ads going to click to? So it's almost back to that second presentation and all of this, like you really want that developed. Um, so before you start signing up for months and months of advertising and, you know, even spending money on Facebook advertising, things like that, your foundation's just got to be great once you receive those ads, that money that you're spending and they're coming to you, then what? Are you ready? I'll, I would say that's a pretty important part of all of this. Yeah, I absolutely agree with Chris. And, um, you know, I think, I, and we, I use this uh, response in our last presentation, but I do, you know, think it, it's important to be an informed buyer. And so um, if you've got your foundation laid, then your next step is going to be to start doing your research and um, setting up your meetings with some digital providers, um, which essentially, as a reminder, those are your sales reps, your media sales reps for TV, radio, newspaper. Um, and then just start learning about their products and what deals they might be able to make you. Very good. I think that's great advice. Uh, you know, if you're going to pay to point people somewhere, make sure you're pointing them uh, to a quality, quality point, um, whether that's your website, whatever that may be. So thank you for that. We did have a question come in. Uh, Carlos would like to know, what should I expect to budget for a startup? Great question, Carlos. Um, you know, it, it really depends on your industry. Um, and actually, um, maybe uh, Desiree, we could send him the link to the basics of marketing presentation. Um, but it's it's around five to ten percent of your expected um, gross revenue. It should be your marketing budget. Yeah, very so, good. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. bringing that up. I w was definitely going to mention that if you enjoyed the seminar today, um, Media Advantage has done two other wonderful classes for us, and they plan to host some, some more in the future. So if you weren't able to join in on those last two discussions, um, because this has kind of been a progressive series, you can actually find that on our website, um, on our on-demand webinars um, at sbdc.angelo.edu. So I will drop that in the chat now. And those are recorded and available uh, for 
free viewing. You just go in and click on the register button and it will take you to the content. So Carlos, thank you for that question. Diane, thank you so much for uh, your positive feedback. She said, thank you for the presentation. Do we have any other questions live today on the chat? All right. Well, I guess that will wrap us up for today. So I just have a few closing words uh, just to uh, say thank you again to Andy and Chris. What a great presentation, chocked full of information about digital marketing. I want to say thank you to everyone who attended today. Again, we were able to provide this seminar at no cost to you today due to the additional funds received of the SBDC through the CARES Act to promote education among small business owners. Um, if you would, please give us a few minutes to review the seminar. There should be a evaluation that pops up in your web browser as you close out of the session. You can fill out a quick form. Just let us know how we did and how we can continue to prove our educational content. And with that being said, our next webinar is actually on the impact of COVID-19 and the creation and implementation of your succession plan. So if you're further along in business and you're interested in possibly retiring soon or maybe in the next few years and you're not sure how to prepare for that, this is going to be a great class for you. So uh, you can see all of our upcoming webinars on all topics at sbdc.angelo.edu. And we appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Media Advantage. Chris and Andy are fantastic. We look forward to having another webinar soon. Everyone have a safe and wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Hello? Yes, I actually had one more question come in. So if y'all are still on the line, I'll read this out. Um, yeah. Fine. Uh, sorry, I caught it right at the last. Um, when starting a clothing brand, what should the focus on marketing be? Clothing brand. Okay. Um, so <laughs> is it, I, I actually have a response to this. If it's an online clothing brand, then I think your approach is Facebook and video. Go Facebook Live daily, show your, your new clothing that's coming in, show your inventory. Yeah. Even if you're a brick and mortar, I would do the same thing. Um, we have seen huge success rates, especially here locally and even nationally of clothing brands and boutiques, even small boutiques that have a very large following on social media and they even sell their product live on social media. So I would, that would be my recommendation is to kind of look into some of that e-commerce through that platform. You know, another interesting thing I saw the other day, um, was someone who she does vintage clothes like she goes and shops and buys them vintage and resells them but she has such a huge following she will host other people who just are starting out or sell things in other markets she'll do like a five dollar shout out so she'll take a picture of whatever they send them and she'll put it she'll host it on her page and say we'll go find them and for five bucks she's just putting 20 of them on there on saturdays and oh, so that's, that's cool. an ex way to get exposure if you can find someone who will do that for you. It's almost cool. like a mentor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very neat. Well, yeah. thank you for that last minute question. I don't see any others that have come in. So again, thank you and everybody have a wonderful day. I'm going to close it out. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>